Hey, how are you doing? Today we have a really quick one, kind of interesting. We're talking about the PowerShell pipeline variable or the um, PS item or iterator operator variable, if you want to call it that as well. But I believe officially it's called the pipeline, the PowerShell pipeline variable. This is one that I had no idea what it was when I first saw it, but when someone pointed it out to me, it helped me understand what it um, what it was. And I had to kind of play around with it, get my hands dirty, and definitely left my, my head scratching a little bit um, the first time that I, I really tried to use it. But once I got a grasp of it, this has been one of the tools that I always return to when I'm writing sometimes even the quickest or the simplest PowerShell scripts. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into some quick examples and it is going to seem a little contrite at first, but stick with me and we'll get to some useful stuff at the end. Let's start. Um, let's kind of crawl or walk before we run. Um, so we're going to start with just a basic array. Uh, here we have just an array of strings, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, and we're just going to iterate over each one of these strings and print them out. This is pretty bog standard. Um, instead of doing a more kind of traditional um, for each with the, you know, the I as an index variable and tracking the count and iterate in, um, increasing the count by one each time we're just going to use for each it's a little bit closer um, stylistically to what we'll eventually get to anyway so pretty quickly um let's just go ahead and run this let's not step through it or anything and what you see is that for each uh we have this temporary a that we are setting each item inside of the array and each time that, that comes out we're just going to say write output writing out a and you see what happens down here writing out alpha bravo charlie delta okay moving on so we're doing the exact same thing again but i've changed the code just a little bit so we still have our same array um and we're using something we're using a slightly different mechanism in order to push the data for the array into our iteration for each block. So instead of having a more traditional style for each loop, like you would see in a, in a structured programming language or even something, um, even kind of script-like such as Python, what we have is this is a little bit more system or scripting version where we have the array and we are piping it into a for each object function and then there is a block of code where we're going to act upon that object that is being, and this is a broken way of saying it, we're going to act upon the object that is being for each over. That's really weird. That's technically the incorrect way to say it, but it's kind of one way to think about it. So um, getting into this is that we are what this function is trying to do is set up a generic for each loop where there is an object that is happening um, that is going to be acted upon on each iteration you saw this exact same type of mechanism happening here with the temporary a variable we had an array we were pumping into a for each function and the object that we were acting upon was that temporary a variable except now there's no temporary variable except there is it is our ps item as it used to be called or now it's just a shorthand with the dollar sign underscore pushed together so that it's a single variable so you'll see exactly the exact same type of thing that's a whole bunch of talking just to say that we're gonna loop over an array and just print out some strings um, so i'll just go to again go ahead and run it and you'll see that we have the exact same thing now the message that's printed out each time has changed because I actually, you know, I didn't write the full, the full string. However, you can see that every single time we went through the loop, we simply printed out what was behind our PS item variable. Let's go ahead and set a breakpoint and we're going to clear this down here because we've already seen it. We can kind of, we kind of know what's happening, but I'm going to stop on our breakpoint. And what we're going to do is that we've we've passed in the array you can see i'm gonna come down here you can see that array has all of our strings inside of it you can see that we're inside of the for each loop and what i'm going to do is i'm going to type out the shorthand for ps item and you can see that ps item or our operator variable is holding alpha as we would expect it to be and as we saw in the previous execution now I'm going to go forward um, one iteration. 
I'm going to check the same variable again. And now you can see that Bravo is inside of it. Um, go forward, check it again. Now you can see that Charlie's inside of it, so on and so forth, pushing our array, our collection of data into the for each object function. And then we're acting upon it pretty basically here. Okay, first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap out our um, example data of an array of strings and I'm going to introduce a hash table. Now this is a very simplistic hash table. So you can see that this um, pretty much carries over, or it's, it's pretty much borrowed from the same array of strings we were just using. We're still going to loop over the values of Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie, except now we have a hash table, which means that we have a key um, which is going to relate to a value. So key one relates to alpha, key two relates to Bravo, key three relates to Charlie. Yeah, let's just run through the whole thing just so that you can see what happens uh, when we just run through the whole thing without trying to stop it. Now, this is what's interesting is that we have our hash table. We have alpha, Bravo, Charlie. And so it seems to be in that order We've supplied the keys for the hash table. We didn't change the ordering for them. We supplied it to the same for each object function that we used in the previous example right here. So it's the exact same function, but coming back here and all that we're doing is we're writing, we're using write to host, which is exactly what we did in the second example as well. Only now we're writing hash and then we're dotting into um, the value at the key and we're using the PS item or the iterator operator variable, um, that, that we know that we have access to because we're using this for each object function. This seems a little strange, especially with now that it looks like our data is, is being written out, um, unordered. There seems to be a couple of strange things happening here, but so let's just set a breakpoint and let's get into it. Okay. First to clear any confusion, I'm going to clear the console down here. We've set our breakpoint. I'm going to go ahead and get into it. Now, just to clear the air, um, to make sure that we are certain about what is inside of our hash table called hash, we're going to check on it. You can see that we have our keys and we have our values. Now here's the first lesson to learn about hash tables. This definitely is a topic for a later video or go read the Microsoft documentation on it. But just know as a rule of thumb, when you're using a hash table, the order of your data is not guaranteed. When you're using an array, it is, it's a complete, it's a different data structure, but when you're using a hash table, the order of your data is not guaranteed which is why we have key one, two, three up here in our code as it's written. But down here, as our data is being operated on in memory, we have key three, one, two. Okay. So moving on, we checked hash. We do have all of our data. Now let's track, let's check this crazy thing called hash.keys or dotting into the object. So hash.keys gives us key three, key one, key two. So hash.keys is not going to give us just one key. It's going to give us all of the keys in the hash table, not the key plus the value. Now let's move on from there. So from here, now remember, we can use our PS item or our iterator operator to track the current object that we are operating on within the for each loop. So let's check what's inside of it. Don't worry yet about the hash dot PS item or the hash dot underscore. Um, just let's just check what's in it first. So first we have key three. Okay. Now what we have in the code is hash dot this. All right. We get Charlie. But wait a second, hash dot, and I'm just going to call it underscore for just a second. Hash dot or, or underscore was pointed at key three. Hash dot underscore gives us the value at key three. Um, what about hash dot key three? <clears throat> Same thing. Hmm. Okay. So what you're seeing is that we're iterating over the keys and we're, and then accessing the value at each key 
on each iteration of the for each object. So let me repeat that slightly differently. We passed in the hash tables keys into the for each object loop. Inside the for each object loop, on each iteration of it, we have access to one key of that hash table. Again, it's a hash table. We're not, we don't care what the order is. We just want one of the, one of those keys, one of those things that we passed in to operate on. So we use it as something, um, as a placeholder or as a reference for what we're going to, the value that we're going to try to get out of the hash table because or even without, I should say, even without order being there, we're still able to access everything in the hash table because we can trust that everything that went in or all the keys that went into this for each loop are is actually going to be all the keys that we operate on. The current um, PowerShell item that we are acting upon is key three. Let's go forward one iteration. Um, then let's check the same thing. So we're gonna see what we're accessing. We're accessing alpha, we're holding key one. We can check up here that key one does resolve to alpha. Um, let's go forward another iteration and let's do check it again. So we're going to check the value of what we're pointing at or what we're trying to grab, which is Bravo. Um, that's gonna be the value. Let's see what the um, PS item is pointing at, key two. We can see that we're we have a, a relationship between key two and Bravo, key two and Bravo checks out, so on and so forth. All right, that is um, kind of as it works with the PowerShell item or the PS item operator. Now, you might be wondering why on earth would you write something like that? When would you use that? Because it seems that, you know, the examples were kind of contrite, you know, an array, a hash table, you can kind of see everything that's there. When would you really want to use this to gain something in your code? This is a, an example that I have here where you're really iterating over a directory and you want to print out inside of the directory that you grabbed. Another example of this that doesn't use files is if you want to run through and operate on the Windows event log and you want to operate on some events. So here, you know, we're, and I'm not going to go through this line by line, but we're grabbing the events in some way from the underlying Windows operating system and we're doing a bunch of things with them, but you can see that there is a for each object loop. So we're doing something to loop over these events. And even though we're not exactly quite sure all of what's happening here, we can see that we have our um, iterator operator or our PowerShell item, and we're doing, we're somehow using it to access what is the message of something. I believe here we're accessing the underlying message inside the Windows event. But these are just two examples of what you can do um, or how this really strange shorthand variable can help you um, write some more succinct code and just kind of really quickly get to the data that you really want to get to. That's been the PowerShell item operator or PS item or the iterator operator, if you want to call it that. Um, I kind of just call it the, the funny underscore operator. Uh, I hope this has been useful. I hope it helps you out as you're writing your PowerShell script. If you like this video, let me know down in the comments below. Um, thanks for sticking around. Thanks for watching this long and I'll see you next time.